Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, mesdames, mesdemoiselles, messieurs. I am David Atkinson, superintendent of the Enmarne American Cemetery. Je suis David Atkinson, surintendant du cimetière américain de Enmarne. On behalf of our chairman of the American Battle Monuments Commission, General Merrill A. McPeak, U.S. Air Force retired, I welcome you to this Memorial Day ceremony. Au nom du président de l'American Battle Monuments Commission, le général Merrill A. McPeak, Air Force des États-Unis, je vous souhaite la bienvenue à cette cérémonie du Memorial Day. Le Congrès, the Congress established the ABMC in 1923 to commemorate the service of America's armed forces where they have served since our entry into the First World War. We do this primarily through 24 overseas American military cemeteries and 25 memorials located in 15 countries. Le Congrès a créé l'ABMC en 1923 pour commémorer le service des forces armées américaines depuis notre entrée dans la Première Guerre mondiale. La Commission gère 24 cimetières militaires américains et 25 memoriaux dans 15 pays. Thank you for being here to honor the brave individuals who gave their lives for our freedom. Je vous remercie de votre présence pour honorer tous ensemble le courage et le sacrifice de ces soldats qui ont donné leur vie pour notre liberté. Mrs. Jocelyn Paplar Satterley will now start with the ceremony. Madame Jocelyn Paplar Satterley va maintenant commencer la cérémonie. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated while we are waiting for the flyover. Mesdames et messieurs, merci de bien vouloir patienter en attendant le survol aérien. This year, with the support of the 86th Airlift Wing based at Rammstein Air Force Base in Germany, a C-130 Hercules will perform a flyover. Cette année, avec le soutien de la 86e Airlift Wing basée à Rammstein en Allemagne, c'est un C-130 Hercule qui va assurer le survol aérien. We're about to witness a flyover of a C-130 aircraft from the crew based out of Air Ramstein Air Base. The crew is from the 86th Airlift Wing, and they're about to do a flyover for today's ceremony at the Ein Marne American Cemetery. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthems. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour les hymnes nationaux.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Mesdames et messieurs, vous pouvez vous asseoir. The ambassador of the United States of America to France. Ladies and gentlemen of the French Parliament and Senate. Madame the Mayor of Bello. Generals, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Regional and General Council, the commissioners of the American Battle Monuments Commission, veterans, and distinguished guests. On behalf of the American Overseas Memorial Day Association, we welcome you. Au nom de l'Association Américaine des Memorial Day à l'étranger, nous sommes heureux de vous accueillir. We would like to recognize the presence of family members of the men we honor today. Nous tenons à reconnaître aujourd'hui la présence de membres de la famille d'hommes honorés ici. Mr. Merlin Menchel, great nephew of Paul Menchel, fifth Marine on the wall of the missing. Monsieur Merlin Menchel, petit neveu de Paul Menchel, cinquième régiment de marine sur le mur des disparus. Mrs. Patricia Carroll, niece of Private Earl William Matimore, sixth Marine, buried Plot B, row three, grave nine. Madame Patricia Carroll, nièce du Marine Earl William Matimore, sixième Régiment de Marine, enterré Plot B, rangé trois, tombe neuf. Mr. Raymond Gary, nephew of Private Marion Gary, 6th Marine, buried plot A, row 3, grave 70. Monsieur Raymond Gary, neveu du Marine Marion Gary, 6e Régiment de Marine, enterré plot A, rangé 3, tombe 70. Mrs. Gdak from Poland. Great niece of Private Gdak Frank, 7th Infantry Division, 7th Infantry 3rd Division, buried plot A, row 6, grave 9. Madame Gdak de Pologne, petite nièce du soldat Frank Gdak, 7e Régiment de la 3e Division, enterré plot A, range 6, tombe 9. We also recognize the presence of wounded soldiers and marines. Nous reconnaissons aussi la présence de soldats et de marines blessés. In 1920, the American Overseas Memorial Day Association, a private and tax-exempt association, was founded. Its first and foremost goal is to commemorate and honor the American Service Members' Sacrifices. En 1920, l'Association américaine du Memorial Day, une association privée déductible d'impôts, vit le jour. Son action essentielle fut et est encore aujourd'hui de financer les commémorations à l'étranger, honorant les sacrifices des membres de nos forces armées. As we are all gathered in this beautiful and peaceful garden of stones, the American Memorial Day Association members express to you their deepest gratitude for your presence as we commemorate our soldiers' ultimate sacrifice. Alors que nous sommes tous rassemblés dans ce beau et paisible jardin de pierre, les membres de l'Association américaine du Memorial Day 
vous expriment leur profonde gratitude et vous remercient de votre présence alors que nous commémorons aujourd'hui le souvenir de nos soldats morts au champ d'honneur. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Monique Beignet, Mayor of Bello, will present a welcoming message. Mesdames et Messieurs, Madame Monique Beignet, Maire de Bello, va vous présenter son message de bienvenue. l'ambassadeur des États-Unis en France, Mesdames, Messieurs les parlementaires, His Excellency the Ambassador of the United States of America to France, Ladies and Gentlemen of the French Parliament, Ladies and Gentlemen members of the Regional and General Council, the Commissioners of the American Battle Monuments Commission, Veterans and Distinguished Guests. Mesdames, Messieurs, dans vos fonctions et qualités respectives, It is always with the same emotion, this last day of May, we celebrate Memorial Day. We wish American and French officials, military staff, flag bearers, civilians, inhabitants of Bello and the region to remember and pay tribute to these American soldiers who came from across the ocean. They came with the enthusiasm of youth and full of courage. For a moment, let us gather together to try to understand those terrible moments of our history for those men who left everything, their family, their country, to come to our rescue. At the time, a great offensive was on. The enemy was advancing on Paris, devastating everything in their way. It was essential to stop their advance towards the capital. Here at Belleau Wood, a fierce fight started. Causing many wounded, mutilated, dead, almost all of them in the spring of their lives. These white crosses remind us of their sacrifice. Yesterday's sacrifice making possible today's liberty. Let us make sure that future generations perpetuate the memory, that they don't forget, that they strive for peace in the world, peace which is all so fragile. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson and your team for the work you accomplish every day, that this place, today so beautiful, invites us all during our visits to respect the site remembering those who rest here for eternity. For the very first time today, kids from the nearby towns and villages will sing in honor of the soldiers for whom we are gathering today. Kids from the public school of Etampes-sur-Marne will begin with a French song called The Song of the Departure. Pour la première fois cette année, des enfants des écoles des environs vont chanter en l'honneur des soldats que nous honorons aujourd'hui. Les enfants de l'école primaire publique des temples sur marne vont débuter en nous interprétant le chant du départ.
chaque fois qu'il honore la mémoire Every time de ceux they honor the memory of those who died for their freedom le peuple français the french people finds the source of their unity notre admiration pour leur courage our admiration for their courage transforms into pride of being a part of them to this one body with thousand faces whose members are able to give their lives for those they love. Here, our soldiers have thrown their lives before us. Here is the nobility of the soldier. Let me tell you the story of one of them, the young French soldier who died at the age of 26 on May the 24th, 1916, in the trenches of Verdun, Sylvain Royer. And through him, to be mindful of his beautiful piece of poetry, that is to say, life and death. Human, just a little more self-attentive, just a little deeper, more consciously experienced to the heart of his heart, and just a little better expressed than we know how to, us ordinary pedestrian of the prose of daily life. Those who are worthy of calling themselves poets are here to introduce us maybe to this truth that is deeper than reality. The prayer of the trenches. Night falls, the same above the two lines, the same tenderness and redemption. Another day goes by that we abandon, to better love tomorrow, which hope shows us. Night falls, Lord, under its faint softness. What is it hiding? extending its shadow. What invisible finger counted among, among our ranks, those whose last day will be this dying day? Which of us will see the next dusk? Which of us will see victory and the ultimate struggle? Our desire grows, heightens struggles, and painfully turns to the receding goal. Without the flame, Lord, the torches are nothing. We're the torches, and you're the flame. For hearts' pride, for our souls' faith. Lord, grant us our daily hope. Lord, you have not answered our prayers. Here are the skies filled with still fog. Each day the weight of our misery lies heavy on us, and we sometimes doubt, Lord, that there is any light. Where are the promised fruits, crops, and roses? Winter has stabbed the garden's glory. To abolished hopes, barns were closed, and the raven's flight insulting our destiny. Mercy, my Lord, have mercy on all who weaken, for those who no longer have the faith they should have, purer in the heart the state of sacrifice, when it was fed by the torches of duty. Others' hours will rise more beautiful and better. Victory will shine on the last fight. Lord, let those who will know these hours remember those who will not come back. Amen. Please remain standing. Chaplain Park from the Battle Parlor Detachment will now say the prayer in English. Veuillez rester debout pour la prière en anglais de l'aumônier militaire Park du Battle Parlor Detachment. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, we are here on the sacred ground to honor those who made an ultimate sacrifice 94 years ago. We enjoy the benefits of freedom and liberty because of their answer to the call of duty and thousands upon thousands like them, their common virtue of sacrifice and their devotion to patriotism. As we commemorate the Battle of the Bellwood, 
be with us now, now and forevermore. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous asseoir. Every year, teachers of the St. Joseph High School in Chateau Thierry ask their students to create a poem on a theme related to World War I. The theme this year was Why? The winner of the contest, Marine Millet Toussaint, will read a poem in French and Jacqueline Cabral in English. Tous les ans, les enseignants du lycée Saint-Joseph de Château-Thierry demandent à leurs élèves de composer un poème sur un thème lié à la Première Guerre mondiale. Le thème choisi cette année est cette question. Pourquoi La gagnante du concours, Marine Millet-Toussaint, va maintenant le lire en français et Jacqueline Cabral en anglais. Why? Why were they chosen to come so far from their homes? Because they were courageous. Separated from their families, they fought for their country. They remembered it their whole life. In order not to forget them, we are gathered here today. They gave their lives to try to make peace. And here we are today, the Sunday, May 27th. We honor them as we cry for their souls. They will not die as long as we remember them. General Jean-Jacques Poc, commandant of the French Defense Area, will now present his memorial address. Le général Jean-Jacques Poc, commandant la zone de défense nord, va vous présenter son message du souvenir. Son Excellence, l'ambassadeur des États-Unis en France, His Excellency, the Ambassador of the, American, of the United States of America to France, ladies and gentlemen, the members of Parliament, the generals, members of the, the regional and general councils, veterans, distinguished guests. 94 years after the terrible fighting which united them in the blood, American Marines and French soldiers find themselves once more at Belleau Wood to celebrate, through their unfailing brotherhood of arms, the powerful bonds of friendship which exist between our two countries. It is a remarkable story where our national fates intersect at important and tragic times with the freedom of people is at stake. It started at your camp and was written down again on the Normandy beaches. It inspires every French and American soldier fighting together in the name of liberty on the current theaters of operations. From this story, the dreadful fighting at Belleau Wood represents one of the most exceptional and symbolic episodes. The most exceptional first, since it was a matter of an extremely violent fight, where the Marines showed for the first time such a level of collective commitment, the proof of an extraordinary bravery and an utter heroism, which have been ever since and all over the world the hallmark of the elite corps. During the three weeks of heroic assaults, with the loss of approximately 5,200 people of its men, that is to say more than half of its manpower, the 4th Brigade of the Marine Corps, led by General James Harbord, wrote one of the highest feats of arms of this world war, which counted many of them. Moreover, this victory had an immediate impact on the morale of all the Allies. 
It provides striking proof of the United States of America's resolute commitment into the war and led to the turning point of this awful fight, putting an end to the final German offensive a few kilometers before its arrival in Paris. A symbolic episode then, when these fights in Bellowood first saw the 4th Brigade of the Marine Corps taking in and protecting in its lines the brave Red Devils of the 152nd Infantry Regiment, exhausted by three days of defense on foot, where 600 of their comrades were killed. After taking in their French brothers of arms, the Marines supported them when the order was given to launch a counterattack. Finally, when the exhausted Red Devils could no longer move forward, they held them up, went past them, went on the offensive, leapt with a crazy audacity into a fight which was from now on theirs against his terrific German army, hardened by four years of dreadful confrontations. Therefore, this brotherhood which united the French and the American combatants of Belleau Wood came in a variety of forms. It included the instinctive compassion towards the one who fights and suffers for the same cause. It resulted in his welcome, his protection, his support. Finally, it led to the utmost commitment at its, its, his sides, at his place, if necessary, in the toughest battle that has to be won absolutely, because it is our common fate that we need to carry. Bella Wood was not only the feat of arms which founded the Marine Corps of the United States of America. Bella Wood was a sort of war parable, the striking proof of the virtues of a brotherhood of arms sealed by the blood of young soldiers fallen here in June 1918. Their sacrifice will always inspire the brotherhood which unites our two nations aiming at the same fate to promote and to defend the values of liberty which unite us. General Joseph Dunford, Assistant Commandant, U.S. Marine Corps, Arlington, Virginia, will now present his memorial address. Le General Joseph Dunford, commandant en second le Corps des Marines Américains à Arlington, en Virginie, va désormais vous présenter son message du souvenir. Bonjour, good morning. Ambassador Rivkin, ladies and gentlemen of the French Parliament and Senate, Madame la Maire de Bello, General Mundy, our 30th Commandant, generals, members of the Regional and General Council, veterans, distinguished guests, Marines, thank you for being here this morning. I'd also like to recognize the American Overseas Memorial Day Association and the American Battle Monuments Commission for their diligence over the years in maintaining this final resting place for and for organizing the ceremony today. I'm truly humbled to, and honored to join you as we pause to remember fallen Americans and their French comrades in arms. It has become a tradition to gather here each year to commemorate and recall the Battle of Belleau Wood and the events of June 1918. For me and the other Marines here today, this is a pilgrimage to hallowed ground. As a Marine who served in both the 5th and the 6th Regiments of Marines, I'm particularly grateful to be here. This morning, in an effort to provide a fitting tribute to those who fought and made the ultimate sacrifice on these grounds, I could describe the details of the fight and cite the German in the Allied order of battle. I could attempt to capture in words what those here 94 years ago must have experienced, the crackling of rifle fire, the deafening sound of artillery barrages, the smell of cordite, the lingering odor of poison gas, the rat-infested trenches, fear, hunger, thirst, and fatigue, the chaos of close combat. More broadly, I could attempt to address the historical significance of the battle. I could share how a thin red line of United States Marines 
was all that prevented a major German offensive from breaking the Allied defenses protecting Paris. This morning, as a United States Marine, I could also talk about how important the Battle of Belleau Wood is to the history of our institution. It was here that the Marine Corps transformed from a relatively small force of naval infantry to one of the most feared and respected military organizations of all time. But as I look out at the cemetery in the Garden of White Stone, I'm reminded that speaking about the details of the battle, the descriptions of combat in World War I, and the evolution of the United States Marine Corps is not necessary. It's familiar to most who are here and well documented in the yellow pages of history. More importantly, none of that is what draws us to this place. For Marines, the Battle of Belleau Wood long ago transcended the physical realm and became part of our ethos. Today, Belleau Wood is a spiritual touchstone. It's a name that has become synonymous with the intangible traditions of our Corps, traditions that were so evident here in June of 1918. Traditions like courage, honor, commitment, loyalty, and self-sacrifice. Our real purpose for gathering is to remember and honor those who embodied those intangible traditions and to reflect on who we are, what we do, and why we do it. We are here to remember, honor, and draw inspiration from Marines like Gunnery Sergeant Fred Stockham. While assisting in evacuating his wounded comrades, Gunnery Sergeant Stockham noticed that the gas mask of a wounded Marine was shot away. Unhesitatingly, he removed his own gas mask and insisted upon giving it to the wounded man, knowing that the effects of the gas would be fatal to himself. In the event, he continued to direct and assist with the evacuation of the wounded until he collapsed and died. We are here to remember, honor, and draw inspiration from leaders like Lieutenant Clifton Cates. After being wounded three times, he scribbled a note to his battalion commander from his captured bit of trench saying, I have only two men left out of my company and 20 out of others. I have no one to my left and only a few to my right. I will hold. Since 1918, millions have proudly followed in the footsteps of Stockham, Cates, and the many others like them who fought here. The intangible traditions so evident at Bella Wood have been carefully passed down from generation of Marines to generation of Marines. These traditions have inspired the success of Marines at places like Guadalcanal, Chosin, Way City, and Fallujah. And they continue to inspire Marines today in places like Sangin and Kajaki. Beyond being a spiritual touchstone for our Corps, Bella Wood has also come to symbolize the commitment of the American and French people to the shared ideals of liberty and justice. This morning, we remember that we were shoulder to shoulder defending those high ideals here at Bella Wood, just as we were at Yorktown and just as we are in Afghanistan today. But even pausing this morning to recall the traditions of our core or the high ideals of our two nations is not sufficient. It's not enough to pause and mark the graves here with flags and wreaths. If we truly want to honor those who fought and died here, each American and Frenchman in uniform will leave here recommitted to carrying on the intangible traditions of those who fought at Bella Wood. If we truly want to honor those who fought and died here, each American and French citizen will leave here with renewed commitment to our respective nations and the values for which they stand. Each of us will leave here determined to, in some small way, serve our nation and our community in honor of those who have given their all. Ladies and gentlemen, if we do all that, we will have fulfilled the purpose of this monument as envisioned by General James Harbord, the commander of the Marines during the battle. In 1923, a mere five years after the battle, he returned to this site and said, now and then a veteran will come here to live again the brave days of that distant June. Here will be raised the altars of patriotism. Here will be renewed the vows of sacrifice and consecration to country. Hither will come our countrymen in hours of depression and even of failure and take new courage from this shrine of great deeds. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for the distinct honor of joining you. 
Semper Fidelis and Merci. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed to the wreath laying ceremony. Mesdames et messieurs, nous allons maintenant procéder au dépôt des gerbes. The first six wreaths will be led one at a time. Les six premières couronnes seront déposées une par une. As we begin the laying of the wreaths, I'm here with Mr. Chuck Hunt, who's the regional director for World War I for the American Battle Mission, Battle Monuments Commission. Sir, what is it like working for, a, for an organization that just preserves our history? It's an honor to work for ABMC and be part of an agency that works very hard to make sure we never forget. We never forget the sacrifice of over 200,000 men and women who are memorialized with us. It allows us to, uh, it, I find my position very rewarding because it allows me to get engaged with the day-to-day -day mission of making sure our cemeteries and memorials are beautiful day in and day out. But it also allows us to be involved in some very important initiatives. For instance, uh, the 100th anniversary of World War I is, will be upon us soon. And we're working very hard on a number of fronts to make sure that's an important commemoration for our nation. For instance, we're working closely with French partners to provide a more secure future for the Lafayette Escadrille Memorial near Paris. Many people regard that as the birthplace of the U.S. Air Force or commemorates the, the birth of the U.S. Air Force. We're working on visitor centers at Ms. Argonne and Flanders Field to tell our nation's story and the, the watershed event that World War I was for us. You know, it was essentially our emergence as a superpower as a nation. We're enhancing our website to help Americans have more content that will help them reconnect with this very important conflict and that helped define our future as a nation. We're working with numerous partners and museums and so forth to make sure other dimensions of the story are told. Okay, and sir, um, the ABMC has more than 20, 24 cemeteries and 25 monuments in 15 different countries. So can you talk to me a, bit, a little bit about those different workers in those countries? The cemeteries are beautifully kept. Can you just talk to me about what, what they feel when they're working on these cemeteries? Well, from visiting the cemeteries, it, you're, I'm struck by the amount of dedication that our staff has to making sure these places are beautiful in the summer when we have many visitors or in the winter when we don't have that many visitors. Uh, many of these employees have a personal connection to the cemetery. Some are multi-generational, where maybe their grandfather worked in the cemetery and their father, and now they're working in the cemetery. And they feel a strong personal connection, and they do a fabulous job. Okay, well, thank you, sir, for your time. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. commandant la zone de défense nord au nom de l'armée de terre française. General Joseph Dunford, Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, in the name of the United States Marine Corps.
is an historical day for the United States Marine Corps. Representatives from the 5th and 6th Marine Regiments, the two U.S. Marine Regiments that participated in the battle and victory of Bellow Wood, are both here to honor their fallen comrades. Because of this rare opportunity, we are making an exception to our, our normal protocol arrangement and would like to call forward representatives from the 5th and 6th Marine so that they can lay wreaths at the same time. Aujourd'hui est un jour historique pour le corps des Marines américains. Les 5e et 6e régiments de Marines, ceux-là même qui en leur temps avaient participé à la bataille et à la victoire du Bois Bélo, sont tous deux là afin de rendre hommage à leurs camarades tombés au combat. Parce que c'est un événement rare, nous allons faire une entorse aux règles protocolaires habituelles. Les représentants des 5e et 6e régiments de marine déposeront leurs couronnes en même temps. I'm here now with Sergeant Major Ronald Green, who's the Sergeant Major of Marine Forces Europe and Africa. Sergeant Major, could you just talk to us about why Bella Wood is so significant for the Marine Corps? Yes, good morning. Uh, the significance of Bella Wood to the Marine Corps, uh, 94 years ago, America entered World War I, and the Marines came to Bella Wood. We were the last force that repelled the Germans from Paris. It was about 50 miles from here to Paris, and the Marines were called upon. There were all services from America here, but the Marines were the ones placed in the woods and asked to repel the forces. And when the French were, were marching back and telling the Marines to retreat, there was one captain, I believe his name was Captain Williams. He said, retreat hell, we just got here. There were men like Dan Daly and others here in the woods that had an indomitable spirit, just like those in the, in the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's no different. The spirit of Marines that live here di during that time, it's the same spirit that's fighting in the war today. And we come here today on this hollow ground to recognize those who've gone before us. And Sergeant Major, why do you think this place has become sort of a symbol for the Marine Corps? This is a symbol for the Marine Corps because this is the first time in American history where Marines entered the war in World War I and fought together as a corps. This sort of defines, or not sort of, it actually defines the Marine Corps for the very first time. There are two places in the Marine Corps that we're taught in boot camp, OCS, and throughout training. One is Iwo Jima. But the beginning was right here in Bella Wood. We earned our name the Devil Dogs. When we, when we were charging five different times and repelled on the sixth time, we took it down on the Germans. And they called us the Devil Dogs because they understood the spirit. No matter how many Marines you took out, they would just keep coming. And here we are coming back today to recognize that. Now, Sergeant Major, if you don't mind, could I ask you, would you personally feel coming to this place? Uh, they say all Marines try to get here once in their lifetime. I'm not sure how many times you've been here before, but could you talk about what it's like for you personally to be here today? Yes, I can. You know, as I walked up to the statue on Mike today and all the Marines and the French were gathered, it brought a tear to my eye. You know, I could, I could almost feel the spirit of the Marines who fought here. To come here today is very significant in my career as it is many Marines who come here every year. I can say... Uh, I've been to Iwo Jima, and coming here really defines my, my lifetime because being a Marine is more than just, you know, a job. It's a career. It's a way of life. It's a way of life for me. And to have come here at the end of my career is really, you know, the, the, it, it, it brings it all to a closing. And I'm very, very happy to have come here. Okay. Well, thank you, Sergeant Major. Thank you so much for your time. This is Sergeant Major Ronald Green of Marine Forces Africa and Europe. Thank you. et M. Franck Briffaut, conseillers régionaux de Picardie, au nom de messieurs les conseillers régionaux de Picardie. Madame Michèle Fuselier, présidente de la communauté de communes de Château-Thierry, au nom de la communauté de communes de Château-Thierry. 
Group Captain Mark Green, Defense Attaché, Australian Embassy to France, in the name of the Australian Defense Force. Captain Nick Stanley, Deputy Defense Attaché, United Kingdom Embassy to France, in the name of the Fallen. The Ein Marne American Cemetery has had ceremonies like this almost since it was created. About 15 years ago is when the ceremony really started to grow into the crowd size we see today. And a lot of that is because of the community involvement. You heard some songs from the children earlier and you heard a poem that was actually written by a high school student from here in the area, the town called Chateau Terry. They were also out here, the children and the Marines placing all of the flags, really just doing everything they can to make sure this is a special day. And and that those who fought so long ago were remembered. De Chateau Thierry. Lieutenant General Helic, Commander of the Marine Forces Europe, in the name of the Marine Forces Europe. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Merriman, in the name of the 80th Division Veteran Association. Mr. Steve Arnold, Director Optical Adjoint, in the name of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Monsieur Faucheur, président départemental, et Monsieur Le Polar, vice-président, au nom de l'Union fédérale des anciens combattants et victimes de guerre. Monsieur Soudieu, président départemental, au nom de l'Association des anciens combattants, prisonniers de guerre, combattants d'Algérie, Tunisie. I'm here now with Lance Corporal Paul Shiraishi. I'm sorry if I messed your name up, Lance Corporal, but I understand that you have a relative buried in this very cemetery. Can you talk to us about that? Uh, yes, it's my uh, grandmother's uncle. Uh, he's actually buried uh, not too far away from there. And uh, yeah. So why is it so important that you made this trip out here? Well, uh, as a Marine, I'm always taught that the World War I battle here was uh, really important. And uh, as a relative, it's a big family thing for us as well. So what do you actually feel as you walk through this cemetery? A lot of honor, a lot of tradition. Uh, I'm very, it's just happiness and joy, just so I can honor the dead. Okay, well, thank you for your uh, service, Lance Corporal. Thank you. Monsieur Barthélémy Ballester, au nom de l'association Les Fleurs de la Mémoire. Madame de Vaugeler, présidente de l'association Les Fils des Tués, département de la Manche, au nom de la Fédération Nationale des Fils des Morts pour la France, Les Fils des Tués. Monsieur Gérard Bazin, au nom de l'association Lorraine Battle Memorial.
Mrs. Haley. In the name. I'm here with Mr. Tom Cavaness, who's also with the ABMC from the Regional Director of World War II North. Sir, I understand um, that, you know, basically I'm, I'm asking about World War I so long ago. Do you think people are forgetting or do they need to be reminded of it in some way? Well, I think that uh, after World War I, we uh, made a couple of miscalculations. Um, one was that America, by and large, commemorated its, act, its, um, its uh, involvement in World War I outside of America's borders. So the American cemeteries, the, the eight American cemeteries that were built after World War I, exist all outside of our nation. And unlike the towns in France or in Germany where a large portion of the local community was involved in the war, from Americans, from America, they came from across the seas. It was an expeditionary war. You combine that with the fact that the war was horrible. The atrocities of the war made it, c created a situation where the soldiers came back, they weren't interested in talking about it. They were interested in forgetting about it. In a way, they kind of did too good of a job. So when subsequent generations came along, what I'm actually seeing, I think, is a little bit of a resurgence of interest in World War I, where people are, are looking for those, those artifacts and those stories that unfortunately are getting harder to find because we missed the opportunity to capture them when it was there. And what do you think, what role does ABMC play in, in developing this? Well, clearly, we're the caretakers. We are the guardians of those commemorative sites that were built right after World War I. And uh, so that puts us, you know, superbly uh, positioned to try to advance any uh, type of um, uh, initiative to, to uh, rekindle that memory. But uh, I think that what we're really trying to do is leverage modern technology. Uh, we believe that uh, today um, a lot of young people are very, you know, obviously very web enabled, very uh, iPhone enabled. And what we'd like to do is uh, we've got several initiatives on the way to try to improve our website, to try to use mobile applications, to try to use virtual tours, those types of things, to try to reconnect with the American people that may never have the opportunity to come over to Europe or uh, outside the United States borders to visit these places. So, sir, how do you personally feel working for an organization like uh, ABMC? Well, I've been working here a very long time. I'm a person that's uh, you know, also very Francophile. I, I, I like Europe a lot, and I think that it's really an honor to me. It's very humbling to be able to represent our country in this way uh, because I don't think that anybody can deny that what uh, America, that American sacrifice was essential to the period of peace that we've uh, observed since uh, 1944. And uh, to tell you the truth, um, to be a small part of that is just uh, honestly an honor. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for taps and the raising of the colors. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour la sonnerie aux morts et la levée des couleurs.
and gentlemen, please join me in a moment of silence. Mesdames et messieurs, recueillons-nous lors d'une minute de silence. par des troupes. Stay with us. Coming up, we'll have amazing performances by a French band, the Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, and the Marine Silent Drill Platoon. That's coming up next.
Captain by the Band. The French music principal des troupes de marine will begin, followed by the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps and the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon from Marines Barracks, Washington, D.C. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous asseoir pour assister au concert des deux musiques militaires. La musique principale des troupes de marine françaises débutera, suivie par le corps des tambours et clairons, puis de la section silencieuse, toutes deux basées à la caserne du corps des marines à Washington, D.C.
Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. proudly presents the Commandant's Own, the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps. This march is performed as a tribute to the sacrifice of those in public service and service members worldwide. The Drum and Bugle Corps hopes you enjoy uncommon valor. The program will continue with a stirring classic by Morton Gould. This patriotic work is based on a popular American Civil War anthem. The Commandant's Own is proud to bring you American Salute. Next, we feature our virtuosic percussion section as they perform a bluegrass sensation composed by husband and wife team Felice and Bootlow Bryant. We hope you enjoy Rocky Top. Written during the American Civil War, our next selection was originally a campground meeting song. This popular tune carried many verses until the lyrics were rewritten by Julia Ward Howe. It was her words that became our most requested patriotic theme, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. proudly presents, under the direction of Captain Christopher Hall, the Commandant's Own, the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps.
Stone, the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps. Make sure you stay with us in just a few moments. The Marine Silent Drill Platoon, all the way from Marine Barracks in Washington, D.C., will perform. Stay with us. Present over six decades of marching and rifle drill precision. A legacy of honor, commitment, and discipline. From Mary and Marine Barracks during the sunset parades of 1948. These Marines perform for hundreds of thousands of spectators annually throughout our nation and abroad. In addition, they represent the Marine Corps at numerous ceremonies in the National Capital area, honoring visiting dignitaries and heads of state. The platoon executes its drill sequence without verbal cadence or commands. The 10 and 1 half pound M1 rifles they carry with fixed bayonets are standard for all our Marine Barrack ceremonial platoons and are fully operational. The platoon commander is Captain Edward Hubbard of Rye, New York. The platoon rifle inspector is Lance Corporal Carlton Williams of Phoenix, Arizona. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Barracks Washington, D.C. proudly presents the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon.
ladies and gentlemen, the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon. <laughs> 